Hello everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us live for today's webinar. My name is Mathilde and I'm the marketing manager at Amity where we provide customer success managers with the platform that they need to retain and grow their customers at scale. So we're really, really excited uh, to discuss the topic of customer success today with our really good friends from Chargebee. Of course, you guys all know what we're talking about. We're talking about churn. Uh, and today's topic is answering your biggest questions um, about churn. So we're super lucky to have Vikram from Chargebee joining us today. Um, as Chargebee's Director of Marketing, Vikram has immersed himself in the world of subscription management and all things churn. So it will be really awesome to hear him tackle this um, really big topic for us today. So we're really thankful that he's willing to do that. Um, before we start, I just want to share a few housekeeping notes with everybody. Uh, we will be recording today's session and we will be sending a replay link to everyone uh, this week. So just keep an eye on your inbox. Um, you'll get a note from me uh, in the coming days with a replay link, which you can use and you can share with your network as well. Uh, we do have a Q&A planned at the end of the webinar. So at any point, uh, you can open your Q&A panel in Zoom and you can send us your questions. Don't wait until the end or don't be shy. Um, I'll be going through them and, and trying to um, ask as many as, of them as possible to Vikram at the end. And uh, as usual, join us on Twitter using the hashtag CSWebinar and you can tag us at GetAmity and at ChargeBee and we'd love to, uh, to engage with you on there. We also encourage everyone to find us on social media. Uh, we publish original content about customer success every single week on our blog, and we're always sharing the newest, uh, freshest content on social media. So these are handles right there. And uh, we'd love to connect with you guys. So for those of you joining us for the very first time this week, uh, a little bit about Amity. Uh, we provide customer success management software, which allows CSMs to do things like health scoring, tracking engagement, uh, automating emails, and analytics reporting and more. And uh, if you want to learn more, uh, we're not gonna be talking about Amity today, but you can request a demo online and uh, you could should actually be able to find a direct link in the chat right now, which Ezra just sent out. Um, and uh, you'll be able to uh, request a demo on there or you can email me and I'd be happy to arrange that for you as well. But that's it for me and about Amity. I'm super excited to be uh, introducing Vikram today. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Super pumped about today's topic and uh, why don't we get started? All right, and uh, that's, that's amazing. Thank you for that. Uh... Wonderful intro, uh, Metal. Um, and uh, like Metal mentioned, I'm Vikram. Uh, I'm from uh, the marketing team at Chargebee, and Chargebee is a subscription management platform. Um, and uh, I'm going to go in a little deep into uh, what Chargebee does in just about a second uh, and uh, why that's even important for today's session. But before I start, I must uh, really clarify this one little thing. I think uh, Metal mentioned that uh, I've immersed myself and uh, it might almost sound like because we're doing this webinar here, we're some sort of expert in the field of churn. But uh, the truth is, we aren't. We aren't really experts in the field of churn. In fact, um, if... if, if uh, uh, if I can uh, say something from our experience in working with uh, a few uh, thousands of businesses across different sizes and scale, um, one thing we've kind of uh, realized is uh, churn is such a huge problem and it's, it's, it's almost an unavoidable problem that if anyone did uh, have, um, you know, could, could claim expertise and have a permanent solution to churn, I think, I think they should deserve an award just for existing. Um, but perhaps due to the nature of our business in, in Chargebee, we've had the opportunity to work with a whole bunch of subscription businesses at different uh, stages of growth. And I guess, I guess we've managed to learn a, a couple of things uh, in the process. And uh, the most important thing, uh, I think, uh, and the reason that I think, you know, uh, we, we, uh, we should be having this discussion today um, with, with you, with other subscription businesses uh, like you, other businesses which care about customer success and churn is primarily because we are a subscription business too and uh, we are learning every day and I just hope that uh, with today's session we'd all be able to learn a little bit more from each other. 
So let me just start with a quick introduction of uh, what you see in the slide and why it even exists. Um, so one thing you might have noticed as a subscription business is that you're quite different. You're really different from uh, a, a, a traditional one-off kind of a business. Um, and, you know, you knew that it's just, you know, the act of having to build your customer month after month and deliver your service uh, over a continuum really changes everything, right? Right from the metrics we end up tracking to the kind of organizations we build and the decisions we make. But the biggest difference um, in, in, for, a, for a subscription business is that the product experience, the payment experience, and the support experience are all so deeply tied together that you can't just compromise on any one aspect. So to start off, uh, Chargebee is a subscription management platform that handles all of your recurring billing and payments and allows you to manage every part of your subscription lifecycle, right from the point of acquiring a customer to growing revenue from them and retaining them for life. So that's kind of what we do. And, and uh, since, since Chargebee ends up being a, a central hub for, for a subscription business, we kind of have a little bit of visibility into, in, 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 into, into where revenue comes from, where revenue uh, is able to grow, and uh, unfortunately, where revenue uh, ends up churning. So let's, let's just start off with, with, with basic definitions, right? Uh, as, as a business, we all want to grow, and growth means uh, adding new revenue revenue at the top, expanding revenue from existing customers, and accounting for all of that revenue lost because customers end up canceling or downgrading or uh, contracting their usage of the product. And, you know, just, just, just looking at the slide, you already know that, you know, churn is, uh, is, is, is that negative thing. It's, it's that thing pulling your growth down. It's, it's the villain in our story. But really, how bad is it? So um, we just came up with uh, a quick uh, simulation of um, uh, what, what churn might look like for um, an average company. So uh, we, just, we just take the case of uh, a company uh, running $10,000 in uh, MRR right now um, with uh, an average revenue per user of $100 and uh, growing at 3%, which is kind of standard for um, uh, actually uh, slightly above average for um, a, a decent growth B2B SaaS business. Um, at a 0% churn rate without, without customers churning at all and consistently growing at 3%, um, you would expect this business um, to uh, get to a, a revenue run rate of 25 or have a 2.5x growth from their initial 10,000 in about 12 months. But what happens with just a 2% churn um, is the, the growth now goes from 2.5x um, to just a little above 2x, right? 2.1x. And what happens? Now, 0% churn is ideal. And 2% churn is kind of like the industry average. But 7% churn is really when uh, the uh, when, when, when things are really, really, really bad. At 7% churn, it means you're bleeding all over the place. And um, the math is just obvious. At a 7% churn, you, uh, a business would hardly be able to retain any of the revenue that it's adding on the top month after month. So a business starting at 10K uh, in the beginning, after 12 months, has just grown to about 1.5X. But what happens if you have negative churn? What happens if your customers are actually growing and the growth from your existing customer base is able to uh, give you more revenue than uh, the loss that you're facing because of cancellations and downgrades? Um, at a negative 3% churn rate, uh, a business would be able to grow to a massive 3.3x in revenue by the end of the year, right? And so this, this this is just to illustrate um, the value uh, that churn brings in. And uh, uh, we have our MRR calculator in Chargebee. You can just uh, go down uh, to the link uh, that uh, we'll be sharing uh, during the webinar, or you can just uh, Google MRR calculator for Chargebee, and uh, you could just go and plug in your numbers and calculate your projections and see how churn really impacts your metrics. So the, the, the really interesting part, the, the awesome part about a subscription business also ends 
of being the worst thing, which is um, the compounding effect of uh, revenue, right? So you can see that with, um, with, with even a unit increment in churn, um, the drop in revenue over time is just, is just drastic. You, you go down at, at a negative 3% to a positive 7% uh, churn is a total of 10%. But you go from a 33K um, uh, revenue business to just about 15K. So let's just quickly talk about uh, a couple of metrics and how these different metrics evolved um, with respect to churn. Now, I know a lot of these metrics might be uh, pretty basic uh, to a lot of businesses, but it's useful to not just understand the metrics, but to understand where these metrics came from and, uh, and really the evolution of uh, these metrics over time. Uh, so we know exactly what to look for and to identify where these metrics might have their uh, blind spots. So the most basic metric uh, of churn is gross churn, which is just uh, the total churn that you see out of um, your cancellations and your downgrades. It's a simple straightforward metric, pretty useful. This, this is a, a simple dollar value, which means uh, if you're facing uh, $3,000 of revenue churn, that's $3,000 of revenue churn. And um, uh, for a focused team, um, like your customer success team, whose aim is to get you down to zero, zero churn, um, this becomes a very useful KPI in terms of uh, how much have we been able to reduce our churn percentage. But the only real problem with gross churn is that it abstracts the value of growth. And sometimes um, it's okay to you know, lose a few dollars if you're able to uh, focus more on your high value customers and grow uh, and expand revenue from them even better. So um, just focusing on gross churn would be uh, a, a case of uh, where you start losing the forest for the trees. So, once you account for growth, once you start accounting for expansion as well, you get down to net churn. And net churn shows, um, uh, you know, if you have net positive churn, it shows uh, the leakiness of the bucket, which means uh, it shows you that uh, uh, no matter how much revenue you add at the top, this is the, kind, this is the amount of revenue that's actually falling off the bottom because your expansions are just not able to meet uh, the rate at which customers are churning away. Um, and while now we have a slightly more uh, complete uh, picture of um, our customer health, uh, net churn is still a little incomplete because it doesn't account for uh, the addition of revenue. And this is especially useful for a lot of uh, B2C SaaS businesses and mobile apps where um, of course customers, uh, let's take a mobile game for example, customers end up um, churning a lot, but the rate at which new customers are added on top um, is able to justify the rate at which we're losing customers at the other end. So a, a real indicator of growth should probably in, uh, include uh, the new revenue that we're able to add on the top as well. And uh, the quick ratio, which is the third phase of this evolution, is, um, one, of, uh, is one such metric that's, uh, that's lived through the ages. So quick ratio predates uh, SaaS and subscription businesses. In fact, it's been used uh, in accounting uh, um, uh, best practices forever. And very simply, it's the growth multiple of your revenue addition over contraction. It's, uh, the quick ratio is defined as um, your new revenue plus expansion revenue over your total churn. And this acts as a true index of uh, your growth. And we, pull, we were able to pull uh, a couple of stats uh, for uh, the quick ratio benchmarks for uh, various uh, SaaS companies um, uh, using, using Chargebee. And um, we, we broke them into three buckets. We, broke, uh, we analyzed uh, the quick ratio of businesses which are making under $50,000 in total revenue. And uh, they, ha they, they, they have a ratio of 4.2, which means they're able to add revenue at four times the rate at which they're losing out revenue. Now compare that to businesses which make over 250K, which are able to add revenue at nine times the rate at which they're churning. And that's, that's phenomenal. And uh, one of the reasons that businesses at scale are able to do this is because they have 
they, they figured out their process efficiencies. They've, they first off figured out their channels of growth and also uh, their means of upselling and expanding revenue from existing customers. But they also have sophisticated customer success uh, mechanisms in place to uh, reduce the various places from which, various sources from which they could uh, uh, be incurring any form of churn. Um, but one, uh, one, one, one more little problem uh, with this metric is just looking at quick ratio alone, just looking at these numbers would uh, lend us to think that everything is going good in the business and uh, maybe that the business is able to actually uh, add more revenue on the top than it's losing. Uh, but, but really, it, the question we should be asking is, uh, are we as a business able to hold on to our existing customers and not just hold on to them, but give them continued value, which means uh, we are able to derive more revenue from them over time. So as a business, are we able to do that? And the quick ratio just uh, isn't sufficient as a metric to answer this question. So uh, one metric that, that does a, a really good job at answering this is the net dollar expansion, which shows um, the evolution of revenue growth from a cohort of customers, from the customers that we got um, exactly, say, a year ago, from that cohort of customers, um, what is the revenue growth that we've been seeing uh, over the one year period? And the net dollar expansion is a, it, it's, it's a really powerful metric uh, for um, uh, to, to get uh, an understanding of the long term growth of the business as a whole. So um, again, we did uh, the net dollar expansion uh, analysis for uh, the businesses in our three buckets. And we, we noticed that. Uh, the businesses at uh, which are making under fifty thousand dollars in total revenue were making about uh, a negative nine point four percent net dollar expansion which, which means um, customers uh, from the same period last year were actually giving uh, these businesses um, almost ten percent lesser revenue this year than they did last year while uh, customers at uh, which were uh, over the two fifty k MRR range. Uh, we're making about 21% more than, uh, from the same set of customers than they did uh, a year ago. Um, again, I think uh, this, this ties down to how uh, businesses at scale uh, are able to bring in operational uh, efficiencies and understand their customers better. And uh, for uh, the, the real understanding of these numbers is that um, we could take a lot of learnings from these bigger companies, uh, from the processes that these companies are, are able to derive and bring that into um, the earlier stages of the business. So let's just quickly run through um, the various uh, places from which churn actually comes in. Now, um, we, we, we know voluntary and involuntary churn. Voluntary churn is when customers willingly cancel or downgrade from your service, while involuntary churn is churn due to card declines, payment failures, et cetera. Um, you should also be breaking your churn into early churn and late churn. Early churn, which happens, say, within the first 90 days of a customer uh, coming into your product, versus late churn, which comes in later into their uh, usage of your product or service. Um, but one thing that I specifically want to point out in the session is not all churn needs to be particularly bad. You could have good churn. You could actually have good churn, um, which is say you have a customer moving into, um, you know, moving from a monthly plan into an annual plan, which means say um, they, they move in at a 15% overall discount. Now, of course, you're going to realize a revenue uh, contraction from this, but this is a good thing. You want more of your customers to engage with you in longer term contracts. Now, in the topic of uh, churn and the math behind it, let's just uh, run over a couple of uh, mistakes and problems that typically uh, that that we typically encounter a lot of businesses making um, in 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 how they compute their own churn metrics. So, the first biggest mistake that a lot of businesses do is 
not accounting for renewal period differences. Now, as a subscription business, you have uh, some contracts which renew month on month, some which have a three month renewal, some which have uh, a yearly renewal, one, some which renew uh, once in two years. And not all of these contracts are gonna be up for renewal uh, in the current month. Um, but obviously, when you are looking for um, customers, uh, when, when you're looking for customer and revenue churn, you only want uh, to look at customers who are likely to churn this month, which means they're up for renewal in the current month. And looking at customers who aren't up for renewal in the current month is going to skew your true metrics off because you end up assuming retention of a considerable size of customers who may have just been waiting for their contracts to expire. The second big mistake a lot of businesses make is discarding the difference between subscribers. So throwing in all of their customer segments into just one huge pile and analyzing uh, churn as one aggregate metric really doesn't do justice into, uh, into any insights or knowledge you can gain into why people are churning away. It makes a lot more sense for you to further break down your churn and segment it by customers, plans, and products, and even break it into behavioral uh, cohorts uh, about uh, you know, uh, looking at high usage customers versus low usage customers and customers who use a specific feature. And this is the actual kind of insight that you can drive back into your product and uh, customer engagement efforts. The third big mistake that um, a lot, of, uh, a lot of businesses do is just look at churn as a superficial metric without going down into the real root cause of churn. Now, we are going to do a, a sample root cause analysis in, in, in a couple of minutes. So uh, let me just gloss over this particular screen. But um, the, the main takeaway out of this part is that you really need to be able to focus on the real cause of, uh, uh, of where your churn is coming from. Um, and the next big mistake, and this, this drives back to the early churn versus late churn example uh, uh, scenario that I was talking about earlier, uh, is you need to be able to break down your churn, uh, your churn by the, the, the time since each subscriber activated. Uh, and this lets you see whether the churn is because uh, your customers did not even realize the value of your product or because they actually did realize the value, but now they've scaled beyond it. And finally, this again comes down, especially in the case of early churn, um, where you, uh, where, you know, marketing most often, uh, and I'm, I've been guilty of this a bunch of times, uh, where we focus on just bringing in customers and acquiring them, um, and then we forget once a customer uh, moves into a paid plan. But what we really need to do is we need to track the life cycle of a customer and understand if uh, customers from a certain segment, from a certain acquisition strategy, are churning more than certain others. Um, and this drives back into uh, how we go in and generate demand for our products and services as well. With that, um, I'm gonna go into um, a really fun part of um, our session today, which is running a differential diagnostics of churn. Now, churn being such a core indicator, uh, uh, core health metric of a business, it, it's just really scary when you, know, you have a high churn scenario. It's, it's very difficult to take a couple of steps back and analyze where uh, things are breaking down and what's actually happening happening, right? So it would be really useful to run uh, a diagnostic session uh, and understand um, the real uh, root cause and the real problem area of your churn. So let's, let's take a, a, a typical scenario and uh, see how we can diagnose uh, the root cause rate. Um, so uh, to start off, um, we know that um, churn is high. Um, perhaps say our monthly reports from finance have raised some uh, red flags about this. And the first thing we want to do is see if this is a one-time thing or if it's been happening for a while. We then also want to know if this churn is because of a small set of high value customers falling off or because a, a large number of regular users um, have, been, have been churning from us. And one of the best ways to look at this is uh, to look at your subscriber retention cohort versus your MRR, your revenue retention cohort. And this shows you if uh, you've been having few customers um, 
uh, churning off who've been giving you uh, who, who, who've given you a significant hit in terms of revenue, or if it's just uh, all across the board. And uh, if, it's, if it's the former, if you have uh, a few high value customers uh, churning away uh, repeatedly month after month, maybe it's time that you invested in a dedicated account management or a customer success team. But in the latter case, if you have a lot of, um, I mean, if, if, if you have um, many subscribers falling off the wagon, and this has been happening for a while, we need to know why this has been happening. Are they leaving before they've even had a chance to engage with your app? Is that something else? So the churn breakdown by activation time. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna be able to break down your churn from uh, when people came into your product, um, which is gonna show you if this is a sales problem uh, or perhaps um, an onboarding issue where customers couldn't even realize the value of your product. Um, or maybe it's because customers are falling off later in that cycle, which could be because of uh, downgrades and contractions or because of cancellations. And a lot of times we tend to think of customers canceling out of our service as the scariest possible outcome. But the truth is, when they start giving you lower and lower revenue month on month than they did the previous months, it's even worse. It shows you that either your customers are unable to scale with you, which means you, you need to rethink your acquisition, or they're unable to scale um, with your product, which means you need to reevaluate your product offering and try to deliver increasing value as they grow. Another way to tease this out is to look at churn by plan type. Uh, which shows you if your customers are flowing, uh, falling off your lower uh, tier plans, which means you need to just maybe incentivize them to upgrade or rethink your price value mapping. Or in the latter case where customers are actually uh, falling off your highest plan, which means you again might have a scaling mismatch. Uh, this simply means that customers aren't able to see value with your product as they scale up. And um, the best thing to do at this point might be uh, to get your product team to talk and engage closely with your customers. Now, um, at, at this point, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes um, and uh, run a poll. So um, uh, we, have a, we have a simple question that we'd like to ask of you. So Matild, if you'd like to uh, jump back in and take the poll, that would be uh, pretty good. Sure thing. So I just uh, launched a poll, everyone. So you should be seeing a little window popping up asking you, does your business use a subscription management system? Option one is yes, we use a third party system. Option two is yes, we have built uh, our own subscription management. And third option is not yet. And uh, we're gonna just give everyone a few seconds to Check the option that applies to them and uh, submit it. Um, I think we're at 60, 70% people voted. So just giving everyone a few more seconds. All right. Uh, so I'm about to close the poll. If anyone hasn't submitted a, their answer yet. Um, Cool, and let me just share the results with everyone. I'm sure everyone's very curious. So uh, we've got 27% saying, yes, we use a third party system. 32% sa says, uh, yes, we've built our own management system. And 41% says, uh, not yet. So that's it. Uh, and I'll stop the poll right now. All right, thanks. All right. They're all yours again. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Matul. Um, and thank you guys, thank you so much for uh, responding so quick. So um, the reason we asked this question is because uh, of course we, uh, Charge B is a subscription management platform and uh, we spoke about subscription plat uh, management platforms earlier and how they drive the core engine of uh, your subscription business at the beginning of the session. Um, and uh, specifically, if you look at it, the core role you're looking for a platform like Chargebee to solve is your recurring billing operations. So whether you've, you've built your own tool internally or um, you're using a third party tool, um, you're, what, 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 what you primarily want this to do is run your recurring billing ops. But since products like Chargebee sit between your customers, your payment gateway, your CRM, and your accounting, you can leverage the data here to deliver continuously growing value to your customers and prevent a majority chunk of your churn. 
So let me just uh, walk you through a couple of ways in which uh, ChargeB actually helps you um, solve your churn problem. Now, of course, you might be uh, able to do this with your own in-house tool or any other third-party tool with, uh, um, you know, add-ons or integrations um, and, uh, you know, or, or, or just come up with a similar solution in creative ways, which we really encourage. But these are some of the things, uh, some of the ways in which uh, ChargeB out of the box helps you uh, mitigate and control for churn. So the first and most basic thing that you want uh, your subscription management engine to do is allow you to iterate uh, on your price, uh, on, on, on your price value equilibrium, right? Um, so <clears throat> one thing we've noticed is uh, really successful uh, businesses at scale run crazy loads of pricing experiments um, to the to the tune of at least one pricing experiment every two quarters. So, at least in your early stages, in 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 the first uh, say three to five years of your business, you want to iterate on your on your pricing and run pricing experiments with various feature sets and identify that sweet spot for your customers. The second huge way in which a subscription business, uh, in, 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 in which a subscription billing software is able to help you um, prevent churn is by helping you engage with your customers proactively, by helping you reach out to them uh, before say the credit card expires and say, hey, would you like to update your payment method? Because one of the biggest reasons for involuntary churn in, uh, in, in, in the SaaS space ends up be, uh, being because customers forgot to update their, um, their credit card information. The third thing, now most of us use uh, tools like Intercom or have in-app notifications or chat systems or just have our own app alert systems. Um, and it would be, it's, 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 it, it's a really creative option to communicate with your customers about, say, a payment failure or even create upsell and upgrade opportunities to your customers through in-app notifications. So uh, ChargeB has um, native integrations with Intercom. So if you use Intercom and ChargeB, you would be directly able to uh, push uh, updates into Intercom and to your customers directly in your app. The next uh, pretty cool way in which ChargeB lets you hold on and retain your customers is by helping you proactively extend subscriptions of customers who are at the end of their renewal period. So um, non-renewing customers who are at the end of their contract period, you can actually give them an option to uh, extend their, 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 their subscriptions proactively instead of waiting for them to cancel out. And of course, uh, if you if you want to go if you want to get paid, um, you have to ask. And um, ChargeB lets you give your customers the ability to just click, uh, pay all of their unpaid invoices with just the click of a button. And we call this the pay now option, where you can just send out a single link in an email to a customer, uh, and um, they could they could just uh, fill out uh, pay out all of their un, uh, un, unpaid invoices in one go. Now, as, uh, as customers, we have, um, you know, sometimes our credit limits get hit. Uh, sometimes we just have uh, certain issues, cards get expired. And it's, it's just, um, it's, it's not fun for uh, us to have to stop using a service we really like uh, because of uh, a problem like this. Um, and a lot of business apps like uh, Google Apps, AWS, uh, I love you to have backup payment methods, which means they have, you know, in case your primary payment method fails, you can have a secondary or a backup uh, method to uh, make the payment so that the service isn't interrupted. And ChargeB actually lets you deliver this kind of uh, a service to your customers as well. So uh, you don't have to lose them because just their primary uh, payment method failed. And uh, one interesting thing that uh, a lot of sophisticated subs uh, uh, subscription management software um, uh, uh, love you to do is uh, they give you the ability to pause uh, subscriptions. So instead, uh, instead of a customer, instead of losing out a customer because uh, they're going out on a holiday or a vacation or they just need a payment break um, or they just uh, don't see the use of your product for a few months, 
uh, instead of having to cancel them out and then force them to reactivate, you can just pause their subscriptions and allow them uh, to reactivate uh, uh, at a time of uh, your or their choosing or uh, allow, the, allow it to get uh, reactivated automatically. And one of the uh, the coolest things that only Chargebee offers um, now most uh, most systems offer some kind of uh, rudimentary dunning, which um, which means when a payment uh, failure is encountered, say um, you you weren't able to charge a customer's credit card, um, they offer some kind of system to have a bunch of uh, payment retries, uh, send out emails to customers saying uh, that you would be retrying their credit cards and so on. But Chargebee offers uh, a system called Smart Dunning, which um, lets you, uh, which, which sends out these emails intelligently based on the time when the customer is most likely to respond. And it also lets you de-link de your uh, payment retries from the emails to the customer. So you could actually uh, uh, try, keep retrying the payments 15, uh, 12, 15 times. And, uh, in, and instead of you know, inundating your customer with 15 emails, you could just send them, say, four periodic emails saying, uh, you know, you've, you've, you've been trying to retry their payments. So Chargebee lets you do uh, these things to recover your lost revenue. Now, how important are these things? Well, turns out about 9.5% uh, of um, uh, SaaS businesses' revenue is lost to churn, and about 40% of this revenue is lost due to involuntary churn, which means due to payment failures and credit card declines. And this 40% is a number that is so easily soluble by a business that, uh, by just doing these, these little things like offering customers alternate payment options and offering them uh, and, and having a dunning system which goes in and, and intelligently retries payments. Now, of course, um, we've, uh, these, these are, these are uh, features and these are capabilities of the products. But beyond all of these capabilities, right, um, we believe that the desire to reduce churn and deliver uh, a great subscription experience really needs an organization-wide investment. And um, the reason I say that is because, you know, uh, we are a growing SaaS business too. And we have, I have at the end of the day, had a lot of, um, you know, we, we have fa uh, seen churn rear its head multiple times in multiple phases of our growth. And, uh, and so this is this, the, the, the problems that we talk about today are some things that we have experienced and are, uh, and, and these are kind of uh, very, uh, very serious problems that, that, that we've had multiple times. And the first big reason is because, um, of uh, the way we see ourselves as a, as, as a product. We've always prided ourselves about our transparency as an organization. And that's why we even state our pricing openly and we allow prospective customers to come in and test drive Chargebee without forcing you to contact sales. You can just come in, sign up for the product, try it out. And that is great. But the only problem is um, early churn starts right at the stage of onboarding. Um, users who don't get properly, properly onboarded into, a, into, into the product end up churning more often. And we realized that we needed to create more high-touch situations for our users. And over time, we've evolved a four-step process to uh, onboard customers that includes both automations and manual interventions. In the first phase, as soon as you come in, there is the value propositioning where we show you the value that you can derive out of Chargebee. And um, this, is, this is, of course, uh, automated through the onboarding, through the, uh, through the product trial experience. And then we take you, uh, the, the next step is to show you your use case. We onboard your use case into the product, and this needs a mix of content and product. Um, and since uh, a lot of times we have far too many use cases, every possible billing scenario uh, is, is unique in its own way. Every business has its own little uh, eccentricities with respect to how they would like to invoice their customers, how, how they would like to build their customers. And since we have so many use cases to manage in one flow, um, we've, we've realized that email trips really work very well in the second, second part of onboarding customers into different use cases. And then in the third phase, uh, because Chargebee is the central hub of your subscription management, um, <clears throat> the, 
the way Chargebee integrates into each business's workflow becomes super critical into how it integrates into your CRM, into your accounting systems, uh, with your payment gateways, is, uh, and even, even your help desk. And this is where uh, we've noticed our engineering, pre-sales, and support teams uh, add a lot of value. Um, where we show them, uh, we, we, we get on to a lot of conversations to show our customers how charge we could potentially fit into their workflow. And then in the final phase is migration assistance. Now, uh, from, uh, you know, during our poll earlier about, uh, 60% uh, of, um, uh, you guys had mentioned that, uh, you already use some kind of a subscription billing software. Now, of course we would like all of you to move into charge as well. And um, that's why we, uh, we, we, we focus a lot in helping you bring in all of your existing data from um, different uh, subscription billing uh, tools or payment gateways into Chargebee, even, even from your in-house billing. Uh, and uh, we provide complete white glove assistance uh, for you to migrate your data, set up your, your test environment, and uh, get started with Chargebee. And the reason we, uh, we, we did all this is because we simply realized that having more touch points um, actually reduces the probability of a customer churning within the first 90 days. Now, um, the, the cool thing about uh, us, uh, about, about the way um, Chargebee uh, is and the business we're in is that uh, since again we are uh, the central hub of your business um, once most businesses get onboarded it's kind of likely that they end up staying with Chargebee for a pretty long time uh, but for us our true North Star as a business is in delivering continuous value and of course that is that is true for almost any business but for Chargebee uh, our core value metric is customers processing their revenue so if customers process more revenue through Chargebee, the customer grows and, and we grow. And if this drop drops, we need to get down to the root cause of this. So from, our, uh, uh, from, from managing our customers and, and preventing churn uh, point of view, we do a bunch of things. We, do, we run quarterly business reviews with all our high value customers where we discuss their pains and solutions. But most importantly, we talk to them about their roadmap uh, for the next quarter. Uh, two quarters. We talk to our customers about our customers' roadmaps for the next two quarters. And the reason we do this is because this lets us see their trajectory uh, and see where their business is geared up. And so we internally are able to um, build what they might need a year from now uh, so that uh, when they get to that point of scale, Charge B is ready for them. Uh, we also suggest uh, solutions to uh, all our customers from time to time to help them grow as a business. Because once again, with every dollar growth that our business, uh, that our customers see, we, we, we get to grow as well. So uh, for us, um, some, some, of the, some of the things that we help our customers with is uh, metrics like trial to paid conversion, uh, understanding their cart abandonment rate at checkout, and um, even, even for uh, our customers uh, who, who prefer lower touch points, um, we help them through other proxies like understanding their APIs or webhook response times, the time it takes for their customers to go from their app to um, charge beast checkout and then back, which helps us identify po possible bottlenecks in their operations and ours and suggest better alternatives. Um, we also, uh, invest in our customers to help them uh, solve their business pain. So instead of just pushing out feature sets, we think about how can we help our customers improve sign-up velocity, sales velocity, scale their operations, um, do things like uh, uh, understanding when they should be extending the trial of their customers, et cetera. And the reason we do all of this, of course, it, it sounds like we are uh, some, um, you know, some, some really good at heart altruistic people. But the real reason we do this is because of our true North Star metric, which comes from our customers processing revenue, which means we have understood that whatever we do towards enabling our customers to make more revenue ends up in us making more revenue. So if there's one thing that I would really, um, you know, 
it, it would be awesome uh, if, if you guys can take away from our session today would be in identifying your true North Star metric for your business and derive strategies to make sure that you are able to enable your customers to get that. Right. So uh, for uh, and this, the, 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 the third point here is true for charge B. And I think this would be true for pretty much any B2B SaaS business uh, out here. Um, you know, it's, it's a fundamental mind shift when we stop looking ourselves as a, a vendor to our customers and start looking at ourselves as a partner who is co-invested in their growth. So um, that, that brings me to uh, the end of our session. Um, if you are looking for a subscription management software um, or have any questions about how uh, you could make uh, your subscription management process better, uh, how you could bring in efficiencies into your recurring billing operations, please do check out chargebee.com or feel free to reach out to us. Uh, Chargebee, once again, is designed to deliver, to help you deliver a better subscription experience to your customers. Um, and at the end of the day, delivering a better recurring experience, delivering a better experience to your customers month after month, um, directly aligns to lower churn. Um, we also showed you one other uh, product. Uh, so this is another uh, product from the charge fee stable called revenue story, which is a, a subscription revenue analytics engine built on top of charge fee. Uh, and you can demo revenue analytics for free. Uh, you can, uh, you can just go in and play around with sample, uh, sample data at revenue story.io and uh, look at the different metrics available and how they interplay uh, to give you the, the real story behind your revenue data. Now, Revenue Story, once again, works on top of Chargebee. So uh, you would need to use Chargebee as your subscription management software, but feel free to go in, play around, try both products. And with that, that brings us to uh, the end of our session today. Um, I'd be glad to open up uh, the table to a Q&A session. And uh, Matild, if you'd uh, like to raise any questions that we have so far, Sure. Thanks so much for uh, for sharing today. Uh, really awesome session. Uh, why don't we take one quick question before wrapping up, and uh, and then we'll let everyone get back to their Wednesday. But I'm sure um, everyone will head over to the Charge B website. If they want to learn more about um, about the topic. But we have one uh, good question here, which I, I think is really interesting is, um, in your opinion, who owns the churn rate? Um, is customer success the primary owner or should product sales and marketing be equal owners? All right, so um, of course, uh, I wanna say everybody must own uh, churn. I wanna say that, but uh, oftentimes what happens is when everybody owns something, nobody really owns it. So churn is a customer success problem, but uh, customer success should be able to, to uh, you know, dive into what's the root cause of this churn issue, whether it's a, a marketing or sales problem wherein uh, the value of the problem isn't being sold and therefore customers are dropping off before they're even onboarded, or if it's a product value problem in the case of a late churn, right? So one thing I would say is customer success um, should be owning churn and customer success should know why every single customer who cancels is canceling. And just as important, every single customer who's reactivating is actually reactivating. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for answering that question and for sharing all of your knowledge today. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. I um, hope everyone is having a great end of um, August. And yeah, thank you so much, Vikram, for joining us. Really appreciate it. And uh, I think we're going to wrap things up now. How does that sound? Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, hosting us, Metal. And thank you, all of you guys, for uh, patiently joining us and listening to me today. Really appreciate it. And have a great one, everybody. Awesome. Have a great one, everyone. And we'll be back uh, in September for another webinar. Thanks again, Vikram. Thank you, Metal.